please join me in welcoming Dr. Anthony Sparks. I'm so emotional, I didn't expect that. Um, good morning, and congratulations to the mighty class of 2024. Uh, before I dive in, um, I need to let you know that I discovered performing in theater through the black church. And the first thing you must do in the black church when someone invites you to share their stage and speak at their pulpit is thank everybody you've ever met in your entire life. <laughs> which I'm happy to do. So thank you to Dean Emily Roxworthy. Thank you to Vice Dean Lori Ray Fisher, to my wife, Associate Dean Anita DeShiel Sparks, to my longtime supporter, Dr. Valina Hasu Houston. And thank you to the entire faculty and especially to the graduates, parents, grandparents, and special friends who have gathered here in this moment. And another thing that we do in the black church is we talk to each other a lot. So we uh, turn to our neighbors, as they say, and it's been a little stressful lately, so I'd love for us to loosen up a little by turning to our neighbor, I'm serious, and repeat after me. Say, neighbor, neighbor. Today, today is a good day. Good day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not done, and, and together, we will be all right. Give yourselves a hand of applause. It's graduation day, and as a thrice degreed USC Trojan, a triple Trojan whose fondest memories and first USC diploma was a BFA in acting degree from this esteemed School of Dramatic Arts, I can't tell you how excited and honored I am to be here. My publicist, however, <coughs> <laughs> was like, are you sure you want to be at USC right now? <laughs> to which I replied, this place means a lot to me. And besides, I was a poor artsy-fartsy black kid from a single family household on the south side of Chicago who went to college and majored in acting. So I have always lived on the edge. So let's go. <laughs> Graduates and Trojans, I have good news and I have bad news. This is the speech where I'm supposed to give you the keys to life, or at least the keys to launching a successful career. I'll do my best with that in a moment by sharing some of the ups and downs of my own journey thus far, what I call my seven takeaways. But before I do, I think I should acknowledge that it's clear from life around here from the last few weeks that nobody knows nothing. <laughs> and that some of the adults in your lives are clearly making some of this ish up as they go along and just hoping it all works out. So graduates, lower the bar for yourselves. That's takeaway number one. And let me be the first today among you to say to this incredible class of 2024 who began their journey in the tumultuous year of 2020 that I'm sorry. I'm sorry that too much about the world around you has already let you down. That's the bad news. The good news, and I choose to believe that there is always some good news waiting to be found or created, is that since we've largely made a mess of things, there's nowhere to go but up. <laughs> and we will be looking to you to lead us into a braver, kinder, more truthful, equitable, and beautiful world that values and embraces every one of every creed, color, ethnicity, class, gender, gender expression, faith, and ability. We have no choice but to look to you to use your art and creativity, not just to get a job, because you'll figure that out like so many before you have, but we will also look to you to help lead us away from the world as it was or is and towards the world that we want. Now, that's not gonna be easy because not everyone believes we can have a world for all of us. They don't believe it because they haven't experienced it. They don't believe it because they haven't seen it. But I come from an incredible people who believed in and worked for things, notions, and ideas they had never seen or experienced either. So again, that's where you come in. 
This is the time where actors, writers, and storytellers of all kinds get to do their real work, which is manifesting the impossible and the invisible be be until it becomes tangible. Your imagination and the ability to articulate it in the roles you'll play, the plays and scripts you'll write, the theatrical worlds you'll design and build, this imagination and your ability to wield it is your superpower, both on stage and off. That's takeaway number two. Your imagination is your superpower on stage and off, and you're gonna need it because what you'll find out there in show business and out isn't so much a world of people with different politics and points of views. What you'll really find, I believe, is a failure of imagination. Former USC professor Robin D.G. Kelly writes in his book, Freedom Dreams, that, quote, without new visions, we don't know what to build, only what to knock down. End quote. So the good news is that you're about to become USC Trojan alums. You are multi-hyphenate creatives. You are newly degreed artists and thinkers whose field of work is the imagination. But imagination is a contested space. The good news is your generation already knows that. That puts you ahead of the game. Because I didn't really know that when I graduated many years ago. In fact, one of the reasons I went into theater was because I wanted to play make-believe for the rest of my life. I thought that if a son of a Mississippi sharecropper and factory worker can pretend to be someone else and get paid for it, I win. <laughs> so my plan was to become really good at acting in classical theater, Shakespeare, Moliere, and whatnot, because those are the classics, they are universal. Therefore, I thought I could be cast as everything. And my plan worked for a little while. Um, I got my actor's equity card acting along Viola Davis and Billy Porter in a gender revised version of King Lear at the Public Theater in New York. I tread the boards for Broadway director Jack O'Brien with the late great Hal Holbrook at the Old Globe Theater. Um, I danced half naked in the Buckeye and uh, <laughs> partied with Gwyneth Paltrow at Williamstown Theater Festival. But it wasn't long before I started being told no. No, the classics actually aren't for you. Uh, no, I don't believe that you would rob me in the street, so you're actually not black enough to play black roles either. No, you couldn't possibly be from Chicago. Something's wrong with you. You're not my idea of what I think you should be or could be. So, like an actor, I thought it was all about me. I was doing something wrong. But the same thing was happening to my friends. The same thing was happening to my young bride, Anita, who was told right before showtime by a castmate in a Broadway play in which she'd been cast that she didn't belong. According to this actor, there were no British, black British people with Cockney accents, which is A, a silly position to take, and B, even if you could prove her casting wasn't historically accurate, we're doing a play. <laughs> we all know this ain't real, relax. <laughs> My point is that to our great dismay, we began to be told over and over again that theater and creativity was not an expansion of the possibilities of the world in which we lived, but a reinforcer of the world as we found it. Now, that's not what I signed up for, and I know it isn't what you signed up for either. So what do you do when your profession in the world says that there's no room for you? If you're me, you diversify, you evolve. Um, with the support of a few professors that are actually on this stage, I went back to school to earn my PhD and I began writing as a way to keep working, but also as an intervention. Hopefully you're starting to see my theme here, takeaway number three. You don't just wait on the phone to ring. You create work to work to increase your possibilities of working and a beautiful, powerful byproduct of doing that is that you maybe push the world in a direction that you want it to go. So by night, I performed in Stomp till I blew out my knees twice. <laughs> and by day, I auditioned and wrote plays. My wife came on board to produce my work and after enduring a few doors literally being shut in my face, we managed to get enough support to put my work up off, 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 <laughs> off, off, off Broadway. <laughs> I perform my shows with five, six, seven people in the theater, but takeaway number four is you never know who's watching you. And maybe, just maybe, rooting for you. So just do your work. 
Those felt like lean days, but there was a scout from NBC in the audience one night who was all like, hey kid, uh, I think you might have something there. I work in TV, you ever thought of writing for the idiot box? And I was like, yeah, I always wanted to be an idiot. It's my dream, do they pay well? <laughs> Fast forward a few more years of rejection and prayers, and I was eventually able to launch a writing and producing career. Then 10 years into that part of my career, I found myself sitting in a writer's room on a hit TV drama where a very toxic senior producer proceeded to embarrass me openly and publicly on a daily basis. She would even call me and my work stupid in front of the entire staff, no lie. Eventually, I left that show I had to, but in so doing, I also left behind the lu most lucrative contract that I had ever had. Uh, imagine going home to your wife, who had greatly complicated her own acting career by giving you three babies in three and a half years flat, and saying, hey, honey, looks like your mom might be right about marrying me. We're broke. <laughs> but I still remember when I called my beloved mother, may she rest in peace, to tell her that things weren't going to work out. And she said to me, she said, well, Anthony, uh, you had to speak up on this one. Besides, all money ain't good money. So if you're keeping count, that's takeaway number five. All money ain't good money and call your mother for support. Now, I'm betting some of you know what it feels like to be belittled, dismissed, and called stupid. Perhaps the only thing worse uh, that feels worse than being called stupid is being called stupid and having to give a lot of money <laughs> when you have three children to feed. So what do you do when, not if, but when, you find yourself with your back up against the wall? You mourn that hit that you took for a brief time, and you lean on your village, which incidentally are the people that are sitting right next to you. Please support each other. Allow your village to lift you up, and then you remember your superpower. You remember that you've been blessed with the gift of creativity and an elite education. You remember that you have an abundant imagination and that you can literally create something out of nothing. So I started to teach more, which made me a better artist. I got back to work. I sold my first drama pilot, and I eventually went to work for Oprah Winfrey and became the longtime head writer, producer, and showrunner for her network's flagship show, which helped elevate my career to a new level and winning awards and stuff like that. And then something funny happened. As showrunner, I was hiring a writing staff when a resume came across my desk from the writer who loved to call me stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you might think this is the part of the story where I tell you I was the bigger person. <laughs> and that I hired this writer that embarrassed me. And if you think that you don't know me very well, no, I didn't hire her. My mother in black Jesus didn't raise no fool. <laughs> which leads me to takeaway number six, which was first told to me by my dear brother, the actor producer, Renty Brown. He said, Anthony, the road to success is crowded with assholes who are on their way back. <laughs> no one is so brilliant that they have a license to be unkind. No one. You can be a powerful, impactful, strong artist and be a kind human. Anyone who tells you otherwise is an insecure liar from the pit of hell. The point I'm making as I get ready to conclude is that there will always be those with very little imagination on stage and off who seek to contain your art and constrain your life. But knowing that is half the battle. So my final takeaway, which is takeaway number seven, is that you are Trojans. You are artists. Therefore, you are Trojan artists of the School of Dramatic Arts which means that you are well equipped to fight on, and not just fight on, but fight on with style and imagination. 
Sometimes you'll march directly into the fray with your voices raised. Sometimes you'll slip into the fight inside a Trojan horse called arts and entertainment. But you are fighting nonetheless to pierce the hearts and the minds of your neighbors. As a matter of fact, one more time, turn to your neighbors and repeat after me. Say, neighbor, neighbor. today is a great day. And together, 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 we will be more than all right. Congratulations, graduates. Congratulations, class of 2024.